Hello and welcome back to The Daily Royal, a podcast covering the daily events of all the European royal families. Today we are going to just jump right in. Um, I don't have a lot to say. I will preface I'm recording in my car today because it's been a slow day and I'm like really ahead on everything. So instead of stressing myself out and recording later, I'm just going to go ahead and record now. Um, so I, I think I've listened to these and you can't really hear a lot of car noise. Um, like from other traffic. If I were physically driving, you could, um, but I'm not, I'm sitting and I'm parked in my car. Um, but that's the only really thing I have to start with. So we are going to jump, um, we're actually going to skip Belgium. So there were a couple of events in Belgium, but it was just King Philippe continuing his meetings with, um, state secretaries. So today he met with the, um, state secretary for asylum and immigration or migration, I think, um, as well as the state secretary for, um, sorry, I'm pulling it up. It was, um, budget and consumer protection. Um, so those were just kind of these continuation of government meetings that King Philippe has been having really since like November of last year. Um, so we're just going to skip that because I don't know what happened, uh, and jump right in to the British royal family. Today, there were a couple of events in the UK, um, and they were all centered around uh, Holocaust Remembrance Day is what we call it here in the States. I think it has a couple of different names Um, in the UK. It seemed to be common to call it um, Holocaust Memorial Day. Either way, this is a day, uh, January 27th every year. Um, is when this is celebrated, and it is the anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz-Birkenau, um, which is really the first... <sighs> Auschwitz is obviously is the worst um, death camp from the Holocaust, um, and so when it was liberated, that's when the true atrocities that these people have been through um, were brought to life. So, um, to start, uh, we had the Prince of Wales who took part in the digital ceremony for Holocaust Memorial Day, um, which is hosted by the Holocaust Memorial Day Trust. Uh, Charles is a patron of this organization. And so this was a ceremony that was held at like 7 p.m. UK time, um, and it had, it was all digital, so it was a lot of, it was pretty much all pre-recorded. Um, but it was a bunch of different people throughout the UK. Some were survivors, some were um, historians, and Charles gave an address as he is the patron for the organization. Um, and then at the very end... Um, they had a ceremony where they lit candles in windows. Um, and so they went kind of like house to house and Charles and Camilla were a part of that, uh, portion as well. Um, and it was just this like really beautiful thing. Um, so I personally have not listened to the episode that I put out last year, um, around, like, since I've recorded it, um, but last year I really go into, like, a lot more detail of, um, the liberation and all of that because last year was the 75th anniversary and there was a big commemoration ceremony at Auschwitz, Birkenau, uh, with pretty much every single royal family being represented, um, so I went into a lot more detail there because that was really, like, the whole episode, um, but it, this ceremony with, like, 
the adjustment to being online only and all of that like it was just it was really well done um so that was charles's event um and then the duchess of corn or i'm sorry the duchess of cambridge also had a video call go um like be widely promoted today where she spoke to holocaust survivors ziggy shipper and manfred uh manfred goldberg who are both in their 90s and they um were at they were in a concentration camp i don't think it was Aus- i don't think it was auschwitz although they were one of them was there for a little while um but they tell like their stories and you know really from like the time they remember to like going through nazi germany and then going and being put in these what they call still, I mean, sort of, uh, work camps, which is what they were so lovingly propagandized to be. Um, but ultimately they were the death camps. Um, and they, there is, they, they don't spare a lot of details. It's hard. Um, I have put it on the website, the daily um, the link to the YouTube video. So you can definitely check it out there. Um, it is 100% worth a listen. Like, it is, it just gives a different perspective than, like, what we've read. Um, so that was the first part of the conversation. And then Kate also had a video call with two of the youth ambassadors for, um, the Holocaust Educational Trust. And they shared why they were, um interested in continuing teaching about the Holocaust, um, to a younger generation, because obviously, like, it's so, so important, and, um, even now, it is so, so, so important to make sure that younger generations are educated on what complacency, what the consequence of complacency is, um, and also, like, just the true, horrid, hard truth about the Holocaust. So, that was the UK events, um, and now we are going to go ahead and move on now (sighs) to the Netherlands because there was nothing going on in Denmark today. So, here's the thing happening in the Netherlands. And I didn't talk about this yesterday because it hadn't really come up yet with the royal family. Um, And I'm not really paying attention to the news, so I don't understand the whole bulk of what's going on. Um, However, I have seen some rumblings about the public disruptions or protests happening in the Netherlands about the COVID restrictions and people just apparently being sick of them. So I still haven't looked into it this much um, because I am, I have, let's see, I have five hours left on my news detox week five hours and I am not looking into this until then. Um, however, that being said, the royal family was talking about it a lot today. So I will be talking about it in a broad strokes version because I don't know the particulars other than there are some uprisings about the COVID restrictions. That's literally all I know. That's all I understand from it. So, 
the first thing is, first thing this morning, I saw that King Willem Alexander and Queen Maxima had sent, like, a message to the Dutch people, um, and others about the outbursts. <laughs> this is what I wrote in my outline. Uh, sent the King Willem Alexander and Queen Maxima sent a message, a message due to the outbursts of public annoyance. That's what I call it. Um, I know they are protests, um coming from the states I'm a little uh frightened of protests for a lot of reasons um so I don't always like to talk about them I will if it becomes a thing again um and we do need to talk about it again but for now this is what I'm calling it um so the message they wrote says and of course this is a English translation it was written in Dutch of course um, but it says, our big thanks go to all the police, first responders, and staff of munis municipalities who are committed to our safety. Under difficult circumstances, you do a fantastic job. We sympathize with all entrepreneurs and others affected by the violence. And we are impressed by the, all the heartwarming actions of people to help each other. Together, we will get through this. So it doesn't address anyone's concerns, which... It, it can't. Um, so, as a king, as a royal, uh, Willem Alexander and Maxima have to stay incredibly impartial, um, nonpartisan, etc. So, they can't call for, or they shouldn't call for the, vi the protest to stop. Um, so, even later on, uh, Willem Alexander had a video call with um, a few mayors of municipalities where some of the worst of the protesting is taking place. So I've seen one picture where like things are ca things are being lit on fire. Um, people are just frustrated. That's what I understand. And I want to talk about that very briefly. Like I thoroughly understand how overwhelming and frustrating the past year has been. I get it. It is hard. I'm from a country where up until literally a week ago, we had a president who wasn't acknowledging that COVID was a real threat. Like, trust me, I get it. I hear you. But we have to work together. Like, the only way to get through this is together. And so, I just want to address that really quickly. Um, so, also today, King Willem Alexander was having a conversation with some mayors about the situation. Um, where this is the quote that I am seeing kind of the most um, is... Will Alexander is having a full conversation. I don't understand Dutch, so I don't know completely what he's saying. But a quote is that he said, trying to de-escalate. De a nice Dutch model. I hope you can keep that up, even if, even if it gets more difficult and continues. So, he can't be partisan, but, like, you have to be able... to hope for de-escalation. Um, and so in these more private conversations, like, of course, that's what's happening. Um, but everyone is having a hard time. Willem Alexander and Maxima had a hard time in October. Like, they had a hard time with the restrictions very publicly. Um, like, I get that. So we all just need to work through it. It is all going to be okay. But the only way to do that is to work through it all together. So that was the news adjacent stuff that King Willem Alexander had going on today. And then he also participated in a digital working visit with representatives from the film and cinema industry throughout the Netherlands to learn about the effects of COVID on their day-to-day -day lives. Um, so that's what was going on. Um, I apologize for not knowing more about the Dutch situation. 
Um, however, that's just where we're at. Um, so with that, we are going to go ahead and move on now to Norway. Moving on to Norway, today there were a couple of events. Um, so Crown Prince Akun continued his um, participation in the World Economic Forum by participating in a panel discussion on Arctic and climate change today. Um, and so this goes along with the event he had yesterday where he was kind of getting like an even more thorough explanation of everything. Um, and then today was part of this panel discussion um, because, of course, Scandinavia as a whole, but, like, particularly Norway, is a country that is very eco-friendly. In fact, um, I think possibly starting in 2021, they are no longer selling gasoline vehicles in Norway. Like, any kind of oil run engine is not happening. They are only selling electric vehicles. And I think by like 2022 or 2025, I don't know which, they are no longer going to allow already owned gasoline vehicles to be driven. So like Norway is way ahead of the game um in terms of climate change and climate action and like oh they're just inspiration goals all the time for climate change um but so that was part of the world economic forum and then also today uh crown prince akun and crown princess matmarit held a digital um like a digital visit to the national association for heart and lung disease they have a hospital um and they are running a COVID-19 rehabilitation program. Uh, so they were learning kind of all about that. So this is a part of COVID that like definitely isn't talked a lot about, at least where I live. Um, and I haven't even seen like of the seven royal families I pay attention to. This is the first time really that like the struggle of recovering from COVID has been brought up. Um, so there are a tremendous amount of side effects to COVID and a lot of them are long lasting. Um, and so there are these rehab centers where people can stay for like three to four weeks to really regain their strength their abilities in terms of like caring for their cell and themselves like relearning how to brush their teeth um because a lot of these patients have been on ventilators for up to a week sometimes over i know they also talked with today um a couple of patients one of whom was on a respirator for nine days one of or a ventilator and the other was on there for eight days um, and this was at the very beginning of covid and so they've been COVID free for a little less than a year, probably nine months, um, maybe 10 at this point, And they're still having lasting symptoms. Um, so the rehab centers are kind of created to help in that recovery and transition back to a normal life structure. Um, so those were the events going on in Norway. There's not a whole lot there to talk about. There wasn't a whole lot of information about COVID recovery. And again, this is the week of no research for me, really, unless I can find it very quickly or on Wikipedia, because I'm just five more hours, guys, five more hours of the news detox. So with that, we are going to go ahead and move on now to Spain.
in Spain, we had another slew of events happening. Um, so first thing this morning, King Felipe presided over the swearing in of the two new members of the Spanish, uh, federal, federal government. Um, so the new minister of territorial policy and public function, which is something I don't remember ever talking about in like all of my time talking about the Spanish government last year and also like during the um I think Spain calls it confinement during that period of time Felipe met with all these ministers and I literally don't remember this person like this minister ministry existing I'm sure it does but I don't remember it um but anyway there's a new person filling that post um and so he was sworn in today as well as the new Secretary of Health. So I think the former Secretary of Health has gone to run for president of his autonomous community, I think. Um, I don't know why, but he did. Um, you know, it seems like maybe you wouldn't want to leave the Ministry of Health at this current situation, but... I don't know, the state I live in, the person who was running our COVID response resigned kind of like in the middle of the second wave. It's like, okay, really bad timing for you, but all right, thank you. So that was the first thing. Um, accompanying him was the prime minister of Spain. Um, and then this is just about a, a little over a year since the government the current federal government of Spain was completely sworn in and finalized. Um, I think that happened on like January 8th or something last year. So, um, yeah. Anyway, um, again, no news. So I don't know. I, I remember briefly reading about the minister of health making a statement that he was going to go run for something, but I don't remember what or when that happened. So, um, so that was the first thing on Felipe's agenda. And the next King Felipe presided over the National Conducti Connected Industry 4.0 Awards, which is an award given out by the Ministry of Industry, Commerce, and Tourism, um, and basically is, aims to recognize companies that have made an outstanding effort in their digital transformation. Um, and so this is something that was created just a couple of years ago. I think this was the second um, presentation of the awards. So it was created in 2019 and then probably delivered in 2020, although I don't remember that happening. Um, and then again, obviously in 2021. Um, so that was a thing that happened. Um, looks like two recipients, a bigger company and then a smaller company, um, received different awards. Um, and so that's what Felipe was up to today. And then also today, Queen Letizia was finally able to attend the annual working meeting for the Spanish Federation of Rare Diseases. Um, so this is an organization. I don't know if she holds like an honorary presidency, like, I don't know what her official, like, I don't know if there's a title to her role, um, but this is something she has taken on since, like, very early days of princesshood, um, probably 08 when she kind of got her own agenda finally. Um, I think this was one of the first organizations she really started working with, um, and because of that, like, has taken... Um, has gone through an incredible transformation. Um, but this is an event that she does every year. It was scheduled to happen. I guess that was, that's been two weeks now, um, but had to be canceled because of the snowstorm. Um, and then she also has met with them several times during that confinement period last year. But, um, Every January, it's kind of one of her first solo engagements of the year is to attend this meeting where they talk about like the 2021 strategy and goals and objectives and um, events that are going to happen through the year. Um, because I think March 1st is like the recognition day for rare diseases. It's 
really February 29th because that's so rare. Like it only happens every four years. But when there isn't a February 29th, it happens on March 1st, I think. Um, so it's a lot of planning going into that. Um, and so this was like a hybrid meeting. They met both in person and there were some online digital participants. Um, and it was just like a working meeting. So that was the agenda for the Spanish royal family. And now we are going to end this episode as we always do with the Swedish royal family. All right, so in Sweden, there was one event. Um, so today, King Carl Gustav and Queen Sylvia visited um, the Great Synagogue in Stockholm, where they um, commemorated Holocaust Remembrance Day. They, um, it's, they say it was a digital ceremony, but it seems like they kind of like were... Um, part of the actual physical event, um, that was then broadcast throughout. Um, so they kind of toured the facility, walked around. I don't think it was like an official tour, but they walked around. Um, there was a wall where candles were lit, um, that they were both kind of, you know, having moments of reflection at, um, and just like a solemn remembrance occasion. Um, and so I am going to pull up the Swedish Royal House's website and see if they talk any more about what happened. I really have just seen a video. Um, they hadn't put down too much description, but let me see. They have updated. Um, okay. So instead of candles, it was actually, I'm sorry, they laid stones at the memorial, which is located right next to the synagogue. Um, and they lay stones versus flowers, um, because stones are eternal. So that is a Jewish tradition. Um, and then of course it, this, so it's a specific memorial to the victims of the Holocaust that King Carl Gustav inaugurated in 1998. Um, and so that is a little more information, but it was, of course, just a day to honor those, uh, honor the victims of the Holocaust. And they also, um, it does look like they had a little chat um, with a survivor of the Holocaust as well at the um, synagogue and memorial. So just a full day of just um, commemorating the atrocity that took place during the Holocaust. Um, so on that horribly sad note, um, we are going to end this episode here. Like I said yesterday, we are going to do um, daily updates this week, even if there isn't that much to talk about. Um, just because I, I do think this week is more busy than it normally is or than it has been at least this year. Um, so we will continue with the daily update. So I will definitely talk to you tomorrow. Um, but until then, please check out, there are tons of great like videos today and pictures of all the different events on the daily um, as well as the daily Royal on Instagram. Um, so you can check those out, um, as well. And until tomorrow, I hope you have a great day and I will talk to you then. Bye.